Africa, Yags Ramia is the force behind the Sunlam brand. She was at the helm of rebranding the insurance provider and creating the brand that we all know and many of us trust today. Timothy Maurice Webster took us inside her C-suite and spoke to Yags about the importance for women to show up in their own lives. Hello, Yegs, how are you? Good, welcome to Sunlam. Thank you so much for allowing us to come kick down your doors and go inside of your C-suite. I am completely loving the rebranding. Oh, I mean, thank you. It so does look beautiful, doesn't it? Being the CEO of a brand with, with 12,000 employees, do you feel the weight of this responsibility? Yes, I think twofold. One is the um, responsibility, but also the opportunity, which is very encouraging and you know, creates huge challenge. Um, the opportunity to tell a story that's a hundred years old, yes, a yes, story yes. that has um, remained very grounded and very rooted in enabling people to live their best lives possible, sure, sure. and therefore a very good story to tell. So yes, it does come with a huge sense of responsibility. One needs to ensure that one is very cognizant of your very of your various stakeholders, sure. and one needs to ensure that when you land a message, it has meaning for all of your stakeholders. Sure. Being the CEO of a brand that has, and let's be clear, it's of the brand. By the way, are you the first CEO of the brand? Was this position? It's definitely a newly created position. It's a newly created position. Yes. Wow. What do you think people saw in you that was the thing that kept causing you to sort of be exposed to opportunities? I think for me it was very important that I always did every job I had as though it was my last job and my only job. Wow. And I've learned in life that um, probably one of the good things is, is to not take yourself too seriously. Wow. Um, to understand that uh, invariably you are going to make a mistake sometime. You are going to, you know, it, show a lack of judgment at some time or the other. It's really about accepting and taking ownership of your mistakes and moving forward. Got it. And you, if you look back, you know, if you look at your sort of legal background, you have an LLB uh -huh. and branding. Uh -huh. It's enabled me to make decisions. Okay. Uh, with brand, you traverse a lot of gray. It's not black and white, right? There isn't a right or a wrong. But in order to move forward, and to make a statement, you have to be able to make decisions. And I don't have a problem with that. I think my legal training helps me there. Do you come from a family of lawyers? Or are you the first lawyer? Or? No, I am the first. I come from a family of teachers. I have enough to open up a primary school <laughs> all the way to university. <laughs> have you fallen in love with branding? I absolutely have. Just absolutely love what I do. And, and the reason I do is because with your brand, you have so many opportunities and so many expressions to actually connect with people. Yeah. Whether it be through this very extensive art display that you see here, which spans the history of this organization and actually talks to the history of our country and the struggle wow. that we've come through. So whether it be through this sort of a display or whether it be through a very simple design of a logo which stands for something of substance, something that's solid, something that's bold, or whether it's, it's, it's in words, in how you sure, say something. Sure. So there's a lot of variety in what I do. Uh, there's always an opportunity to touch someone. And I think historically branding always sat in a very rational space. And I think what it now does, it now connects at an emotional level. Got it. Irrespective of sort of the background and the meaning of this actual art, it fundamentally amplifies the brand. Uh -huh. That's what you guys wanted to do with, uh, is to sort of help drive the brand. Every piece can be um, appreciated and every piece is a source of inspiration. Got it. But it's an, it's an appreciation of a deep sense of craftsmanship. And I think there's a lot of similarities between what artists do and what we as Sunlam as Wellsmiths nice. do. You guys have Pan-African ambitions. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a lot of patriarchal dynamics across the continent. I, I don't think it's, it's a uniquely African situation. I think it's a global issue, a woman being um, in the C-suite. Um, I think uh, for various reasons, uh, women aren't adequately represented. I think the first one being that um, 
as women we carry a uh, we carry various roles and responsibilities and I think often women feel forced to have to make choices the reality is that when you're in the c-suite and you want to be treated as an equal you've got to show up as an equal I've made the choice to pursue a career alongside having a family and the way I've been able to do that is by having a very supportive uh, family structure but also a supportive network around me. Um, one of the strategies that I make sure I've always uh, maintained is one of just compartmentalizing um, family from the office. It doesn't always work because you know things happen and one needs to always um, um, run off, drop a few balls in order to pick other, other balls up. And I think the organization, and Sunlam is that type of organization, that's deeply rooted in a value system. Uh, going from varsity to getting to where you are as a CEO of the brand, uh, what are some of the hard, couple hard lessons? Uh, you know, not the soft stuff, but the hard lessons that a young woman should know. Yeah, I think there's a lot of competition out there and it's really difficult to stand out. And I think in order to stand out, the first thing that one needs to do is to ensure that you're in a position where people feel that they can trust you. Trust. Uh, trust is very important because with trust comes more opportunity. When people feel that they can trust you, they create opportunities for you. You're always never able to create your own opportunities, so you need to rely on others to create them for you. And wearing my brand hat, I've got always asked this question, what is your personal brand going to be? What do you think people will say about your personal brand? Um, I think I'm not afraid to challenge. I think in, in, in being a team player and in terms of understanding what my role needs to be, I've also kept a very strong sense of my individuality. Um, but it's always with a greater good in mind. So that's true uh, of me that I always challenge. But more importantly, I think for me, um, I can be trusted to deliver. But not just deliver, deliver to a standard that would make everyone proud.